Hey, brother. Jay, so we have talked about how maybe Sid wasn't that bad of a kid, and we've discussed how Woody was almost bad, but isn't. But that doesn't mean Toy Story is without a villain. Sid does a good job of taking your attention away from him, but upon closer examination, there can be no doubt that the true villain of Toy Story is none other than Mr. Potato Head. Toy Story is the tale of one toy losing his position to a new toy. But maybe it's not the toy you think. Maybe it's not Woody losing his number one position to Buzz, but rather Mr. Potato Head losing his number two position to Woody. I suppose it should come as no shock that he's the bad guy, as the very first thing we see in the movie is him on a wanted poster. And I don't know how much you guys know about fake numbers, but 50 bazillion is a lot. Even for fake money. I mean, I studied fake economics in college, and let me tell you, the fake dollar was way down in 1995. Unfortunately, I did not study fake crime, so I have no idea what he could have done to earn such a high bounty, but it must have been pretty horrible. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is all part of Andy's imagination, and One-Eyed Bart is a villain, but that doesn't mean Mr. Potato Head is. He's such a lovable spud. Or is he? Think about it. Woody is the agreed-upon leader of Andy's room. Everyone seems to accept it, except for Mr. Potato Head, who is constantly undermining him and leading the charge against him the entire movie. There are three big scenes in particular where it seems like Potato Head is just waiting for his opportunity. First, when Woody accidentally knocks Buzz out the window through a series of events that even a criminal mastermind couldn't have orchestrated, and Potato Head immediately charges him with murder. Mr. Potato Head to you, you backstabbing murderer. With nothing more than a shrug to go on from RC, is he the only one who can understand him? To be fair, Woody was trying to hit Buzz with RC, just not knock him out the window. The point is, Potato Head capitalizes on this situation, grandstanding and turning the entire mob against Woody. I mean, Humpty Dumpty was pushed no. by Woody! Including Slink, who was originally standing up for Woody and seemed to assume that there had to be a different explanation. We believe ya, Woody! Also, notice how his immediate focus isn't to get Buzz back but rather to punish Woody. He realizes Buzz is gone, and if he acts fast, he can knock out one and two in one fell swoop and take over. Even later, we don't see Potato Head helping Slink and Rex search for Buzz with the spotlight. Next, we see Potato Head demonstrating his power as judge, jury, and executioner when the opportunity to save both Woody and Buzz with the Christmas lights presents itself and he immediately shuts it down. If you notice, when Woody gets their attention, everyone is really excited to see him and anxious to help him get back. Everyone, it's Woody! Woody! Just kidding! Woody! Slink is just about to tie the Christmas lights to something when who steps in? Tie it on to something! Wait, 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 wait! I got a better idea! How about we don't? Sure, after Woody reveals Buzz's broken arm, it's understandable that everyone else might turn on him because they caught him in a lie. Although if you ask me, it's even understandable that Buzz's arm is broken since he's at Sid's house. But before the arm is even in play, Potato Head is working against him. He even says, Save it for the jury! But there is no jury. He is the jury. In a single move, he basically sentences Woody to his death at Sid's house. Again, notice how even though Buzz is obviously over there at Sid's house since his arm is, Potato Head's goal is not to save him, it's to punish Woody. If he wasn't afraid of losing his top spot to Buzz upon his return, maybe he would have just said send Buzz over and then release the Christmas lights. And then finally, the last scene in question, when Woody is using RC to get Buzz back to the moving van, it's Potato Head get him! who leads the charge to throw him overboard. Toss him overboard! I mean, just look at his face compared to everyone else when Bo announces that that Woody is in fact saving Buzz and has been telling the truth the whole time. Shock, shock, sputter disappointment.
hashtag sputter disappointment. Now, you might think that we aren't being fair here, that Potato Head is just acting on the knowledge he has in any given situation. But even before the fiasco at the window, nearly everything Potato Head says directly undermines Woody. We have to hold hands. Of course Woody ain't worried. He's been Andy's favorite since kindergarten. Well, that mistake is sitting in your spot, Woody. Only it sounds like a car ran over it. Hey, a laser. How come you don't have a laser, Woody? Getting kind of tense, aren't you? I mean, for God's sake, he even threatens Woody with a noose at one point. So yeah, those opening seconds of the movie are not so much playtime, but really an indication as to who the real villain in the movie is. The writing is literally on the cardboard wall, and he almost gets away with it too, but... Unfortunately for him, Buzz and Woody do return, and I think he understands the window of opportunity has closed. So, Mr. Potato Head goes on to be a much more likable and helpful character in Toy Stories 2 and 3. Plus, he gets married. Maybe she just won't let him rule the world. For our question of the day, what do you guys think? Is Mr. Potato Head really the villain of Toy Story? Leave your thoughts in the towel section down below. If you'd like some more Toy Story villain action from us, because apparently we talk about this a lot, you can click right here to find out whether or not Sid is actually a bad kid, and right here to find out how Woody was almost bad. But Jay, that is everything that I've got for you today, man. I will see you on Tuesday.